Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 here today on the channel. We're back on the Millennium Dawn Modern Day mod. We're going to be playing as the United States here today. So, if you'd like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. So, think of this as a, a little bit late 4th of July uh, gift for you Americans, <laughs> I suppose. Alright, we're going to be going for the 2000 scenario starting January 1st. We're playing as the States. We're playing as America. We're playing as uh, Bill Clinton. All right. So, regular's fine. Uh, historical AI focuses as well. I could edit this and make the pro-NATO countries, well, more pro-NATO and the others not so much, but look, you know what? I think we'll just leave it like that and just get stuck head on in to a United States campaign. It's been a while since I've played the modern day mod. Haven't really played too much of the new update as well. It's probably been two years since I've played this, but I'm incredibly excited and keen to learn how the, uh, the massive new update goes. So, Hearts of Iron 4 connoisseurs, let me know feedback and suggestions and tips and tricks for the uh, modern day mod. I'd really appreciate it. Alright, first things first. We're currently pro-Western Outlook. Parties-wise, I don't think it overly matters. Um, Democratic, Republican, I don't really mind whoever's ruling, whatever. I basically want to be pro-Western, pro-NATO, pro-interventionalism, pro-American empire in this campaign. So, as long as the two parties serve that purpose, it doesn't really... Uh, matter who's in charge okay so christian is our national religion there's not like an atheism here or something like it'd be kind of cool if you got like scientific bonuses um if there was an atheist selection all right stagnation we need to go with stable growth because we're currently in a huge amount of debt which we need to fix we can get that by getting more Office sectors and civilian industry as well. But hell, with the United States, we could always just print money if we want. So we want to try and go to stable growth. We want to reduce corruption as well. Definitely going to go down to modest corruption. National statistics in international in internal factions, rather. Um, Wall Street, the military industrial complex, and the CIA. That's uh, hilarious. All right. So, we're currently mostly decentralized at the moment, rather than a centralized bureaucratic state. For the individual, decentralization is great, but as we are playing as the state, and we want to go around conquering factions, I think we want to try and increase centralization. Our military spending is quite small, we would rather increase that. Our police funding as well, uh, it just costs too much, so we might drop to a minimal, because we need to reduce our debt. Uh, we might even... I think we'll just leave it at higher education focus for now. Free emergency treatment. I think we want to go to basic subsidies. And we might even drop the welfare as well to just a basic pension. Consumption economy. We, want, we do want to switch it to semi-consumption economy. That's going to get us a lot more money. Volunteer force wise. We've got 1.1 million manpower. We're going away from the ages of mass assault doctrines. Uh, we're mostly going to be focusing on our air force capabilities, small specialized forces um, in individual units and, and tanks and stuff. So, look, we probably don't really need to install a draft. Global interventionalism. Cool. That's exactly what we want. Uh, Neo-imperialism is good. If you want to play as a like if you want to play a united states campaign and you just want to start war decking countries left right and center canada mexico you can go down and i would recommend neo-imperialism however you do have to change the ruling party to autocratic everything's fine here oh let's have a look at the uh defense companies can we have we got lockheed martin here and raytheon <laughs> yeah we got fucking raytheon oh god it's pretty crazy that me as an Australian, I can invest in these companies if I wanted to. Yeah, so I guess we go with Lockheed Martin and we go with uh, Raytheon as well. I think that would be quite fitting. National focus wise, let's just have, have a quick look. So, okay. 
So we can go further into the east. Uh, we can expand NATO. It's probably not a bad idea to do that. But we also have to get the American economy going. We've got the Patriot Act, which we need to go down to, because we will have some wars soon, because it is 2000 after all. American political system, the American economy as well. Maybe we go with that, trying to get that back on track. I just want to have a quick look at our territories. We control some territory in Bahrain and Kuwait, okay. <laughs> we can release Texas as a nation if we want. That's hilarious, or Cali. Okay, so let's have a look at some of our overseas military bases. We've got one here in Cuba. Obviously, Puerto Rico. We've got Hawaii. Um, yeah, so what do we got over here? Okay, so we do have some military bases here. We might look to expand the air force capacity here as well. And maybe get some missile silos, because war is going to break out over here at some point in the future. Political decisions wise, there's nothing really we can do overly too much just yet. We currently want to increase our House and Senate support. So maybe going with a medium lobbying effort. We can leave NATO if we want. We might even move the uh, embassy and we might even recognize Taiwan as well. That might be a good idea. Intelligence agency wise, yeah, I suppose we create the CIA. Research-wise, we've got a bunch of slots here. Okay, we currently produce the M16A4. And we eventually want to get the M4A1. Dude, that holographic site looks sick. So infantry, vehicles, like the Bradley. Got some artillery here as well. Got javelins, that's sick. Navy, helicopters. We've got some raptors, falcons. We've got some harriers as well, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, I think we go down electronics and industry firstly if we can. So let's go with 3G. Let's go with construction 1. Let's go with nanofibers and 3D printers to increase our production efficiency. We can even increase the monthly population by getting modern GMO foods. We can um, expand our fuel processing capacity in the states but to be fair we've already got a bunch of fuel in the states and we're eventually going to be well invading countries that like i think this area here has like 40 percent of the world's oil so we're going to be able to take oil off other people so we probably don't really need to invest that much within our own uh, country itself ah uh, what's this oh production efficiency capital let's just do that but even over here we've got Space tech, we've got uh, intercontinental BMs. Oh my god, crazy stuff. I love this tech tree. Holy shit. Have we got some like hypersonic weaponry? Yeah, I would assume as much. Oh my god. Crazy. They've got some warheads and stuff here as well. That's sick. Diplomacy-wise, there's probably not much else we can do. We can't really expand NATO just yet, but we can have a look at some of the members. So here are the NATO members. We've got the Axis of Resistance in the South, CSTO as well. All right, might just have a quick look current wars-wise. All right, there's a Chechen war, Chechen war here. So we might start propping up some rebels, I think. So maybe we negotiate with them and... Let's try and send some military aid. Alright, let's send some M16s. Let's say 50 a month. And... I think they're going to fall, so I don't want to send too much equipment. Just in case the Ruskies get a hold of it, essentially. I reckon these guys can probably last a little bit longer. So let's also give some... Let's give 100 a day. And we'll also give some monthly support equipment as well. But it would be atypical for United States logistics and equipment and lend-lease to fall into enemy combatant hands, wouldn't it? <laughs> Recruitment and deployment-wise, um, I'm assuming these infantry templates and divisions are okay. Um, I haven't actually looked at the sort of optimal meta for Millennium Dawn uh, single player units but I'm assuming that these are being created by the devs they're probably just stock standard and they're probably fine 
Like, these special forces groups are probably better than any other. Cool, there's a mountain division here. I think we uh, are definitely going to need them in the future at some point. Our logistics is actually fine. Officer cores, we can't allocate any of these just yet. We can have a quick look at some of the uh, land doctrine. Alright, so we've got the missile systems here as well. So I think we want to go with range. So let's get... Or maybe get the minimum at three. Because this is a whole system as well. Alright, so minimum three, yep. And then we can add a warhead to it as well. Because we can launch these um, from within our own territory. And overseas as well, if we want. Oh, bro, there's even like a missile defense system? That's crazy. I wonder if we can talk to Israel to get the schematics for the Iron Dome. <laughs> get it in uh, the US or something. So I think we'll go with some cheaper interception missiles. Yeah, because we don't want to bankrupt ourselves. That's the problem. If they... Because I think, like... I think it's something crazy that, like, the interception missiles cost, like, 10 or 100 times whatever the rocket is that's coming on in. <laughs> it's like crazy expensive missile defense systems. So we'll just go with the low-grade rocket. In this game, in Hearts of Iron 4, it only really affects civilian in, um, infrastructure rather than like the populace. It does affect supply and stuff. Oh god, we got the space center. Holy shit. This is awesome. I wish there was some, like, a little bit of an auto-manage for some of this stuff. Like, I'd nearly just give Elon Musk the whole operation of the space agency. Yeah, Elon, do whatever you want. I fucking trust you. Just get us to Mars. <laughs> oh, God, this is crazy. Oh, here's our nuclear policy as well. Do we have a strike-first policy? I actually don't know. Or is it only retaliatory? Yeah, we do a first strike. Oh, wow. It actually says in our military doctrine here. Alright, uh, let's get some uranium going, I suppose. And we'll get some warheads in reserve. No. Like, nukes are okay in Hearts of Iron 4, but you're nearly better off focusing on air force and, like, mobilize infantry and stuff. Because if you hit, if you do launch a nuclear warhead, it really only affects the supply of some units and the civilian, like the infrastructure, which sometimes if you're going to conquer a settlement, you're going to have to a country, you're going to have to repair the settlements and the infrastructure anyway. So you kind of don't want to nuke it. You kind of want to occupy it eventually. So it can be a little bit counterintuitive and it is quite expensive as well. Okay, construction wise, office sectors are going to give us a lot of money. So I suppose we get some in. And then we eventually want to try and get some civilian industry as well. Now, we don't have any silos on the US mainland, I suppose. Oh, no, we do have a couple, actually. We probably don't need to have them here, though. Like, we're not going to fire into Canada. Oh, we could be firing into, like, cartel members in the south or something. It might be a better idea to build some silos eventually down here. Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. Because we are going to be more than likely launching attacks into these countries. It also wouldn't be a bad idea either to expand the air force capabilities here. So we can have a thousand airplanes out of Kuwait. Kuwait and yeah, there's only 400 in Bahrain. So we definitely would uh, like to increase that if we can. Oh, this is already at max capacity. Nice. I think that's all for our construction for now. It also might be a good idea to invest some infrastructure. Civilian infrastructure in some other countries as well. So maybe we try and invest... In Japan. Okay, we can't do that just yet. Like, can we do it in my home country of Australia? In particularly my home state, Tasmania. Uh, no, we can't just yet until we reduce corruption. Um, oh, there's a Indonesian war going on over here. Hang on. Maybe I send some military aid to them as well. Because we do have a huge stockpile of it. So let's send 100 a month. Alright, just to help them out. 
help out those proxy wars. Okay, military and dockyards wise, I've gone and set out all the equipment I want. So firstly, we want, we want to prioritize the M16s. Same with the support equipment, and then the rest will just go into other equipment. We've got some stingers here, we've got some javelins. Uh, we've also got a bunch of Harrier aircraft. We've even got some Grey Eagle drones, some bombers. Navy-wise, we want to focus on convoys. And we'll eventually make an east, a West Coast and East Coast Navy, and we'll send those ships directly to them. I think I want to focus on battleships at the high end, and then submarines at the low end. But we're going to struggle for resources <laughs> in this campaign until we start... Fixing our economy and conquering and taking territory. So I think going with submarines is probably not a bad idea. They probably have the biggest bang for your buck. We should also really focus on getting a fantastic air force because aerial supremacy in this game is king. It can really make or break a campaign. A military campaign, that is. Army-wise, we currently have 30 divisions, 399 battalions. 44 fleets in the Navy. And the Air Force is probably quite strong as well. Oh, hell yeah. Well, we can probably have them stationed in Kuwait, actually. Yeah, let's get them over there in operation. Because I eventually want them to be running these aerial missions uh, with their eyes closed. Aerially, how far can these guys reach? Oh, dude, some of them can actually reach over here. Because this is where the first initial conflict is going to break out. I would imagine. Because we're currently going through historical AI focuses. We want to try and roleplay where we can as well. I think we're ready to uh, unpause. I've decided to make an East Coast Navy here. All our military aid's been accepted. And a West Coast Navy as well. Um, hmm. I probably want to try and eventually go to war with Cuba. So I guess he stays. And then we'll make some army groups as well. I do want to try and send some of our military forces to the Far East. Southern Illinois incident. Ooh, spooky. We've got some UFOs, I guess. Um, maybe we found some craft. Uh, not of this world, I suppose. Oh, here we go. We've got the USS Cole incident. Yeah, we're definitely going to demand payment for the damages. The uh, Qatari government wants a bailout. Dude, I need a fucking bailout. <laughs> Sorry, we can't uh, afford this. And Brazil has launched an investment offer. Uh, sure, I suppose we'll accept. Curious just to have a look at uh, Brazil at the moment. Ah, mostly Western Outlook. Ah, uh, shame. Looks like the Ruskies won. Okay, looks like the uh, navies have merged up. So we've got 94 in here. Uh, let's just bring you in. And... Sure. Okay, I think we need an East Coast Navy more than anything else. I think the West Coast Navy here will move it all the way to Kuwait, I think. And we'll get it to... Basically, live and be docked there. Because we want to have naval supremacy in the Persian Gulf. We're also setting up an army as well. So, let's just bring these guys in. Uh, whatever. And we eventually want to send a small contingent. Eastward as well. Now, we're going to be a little bit careful because... Supply lines and logistics in the modern day mod can be a little bit iffy, so we don't want to send too many military forces over there, but we also don't really want to lose this territory if we can really avoid it. Um, do we have that many sort of divisions around? So, mostly in the contiguous. <laughs> We've got one infantry division on the DMZ. Hilarious. Where's this? Oh, that's right in the uh, center of the U.S. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> We've got one, just one infantry uh, brigade in Germany, just to keep an eye on the uh, the Germans. 
Yeah, because we've got like all these overseas bases. Do the Russians have this one here? In Tartus? No, not at this point, but they eventually will have one here. Hey, he actually paid the damages. 250 million as well. The CIA has been created. Hilarious. We can't get any agents just yet. We've completed the national focus, the American economy. Nice. I think we might go down with some political reform, matter of fact. Still got more unassigned divisions. Oh, nice. We can expand the American economy, which is probably what we want to do. Uh, quickly just looking at the trade. So, technology metals is what we really need to focus on. So let's do that then. Actually, you know what? We might be better off... Uh, we actually don't have the support. We have 47 out of the 49 senators. So we can't even go down revitalize industry or regulated markets. So we might need to get old Bill Clinton a little bit more popular. Yeah, because we're already going with that um, medium lobbying effort. Okay. We'll just wait for that to go through. But we're currently slowly but surely making plans and preparations before we can launch uh, Operation Freedom, I guess. Liberia wants a bailout. No, sorry, I can't afford it. So we've got an 18 unit force and then we've got a 10. So I think we send the 10 all the way to the east. It's probably not a bad idea. Let's do that then. Okay, so we can add some military high command. Oh, jeez. Who the hell do we want here? Maybe army command, firstly. I think recovery rate is really important rather than organization. Yeah. Let's go with this. We also can get an operative. Oh, my God. <laughs> Natasha Romanov. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. James Edward. <laughs> Kevin Brown. Let's uh, get uh, James Edward in, I suppose. Microsoft acquires Visto. Stronger corporations means more taxable revenue. This is a hostile takeover. Prevent it. No, we don't want to let the commies uh, gain some influence. All right, there's been an incident. What do I want to do here? Ugh. We're already struggling with senators. I guess we could launch an investigation. 44. Now that this is complete, what will it shoot to? 49. Hang on. I'll quickly pause, because that might be enough. Oh, we might... Shit. I need to go down this, though, if we can. Wait. Why can't I do this? Oh, we've got a weakened economy, maybe? Because we have the senators and the representatives. North American blizzard. Oh, dude, and a tornado as well. We don't have the money. Which is really quite unfortunate. We need 25 billion. We don't have it. Fuck. Oh, it looks like our military force has arrived here. It's probably not a bad idea to move our embassy and also recognize Taiwan. Like, at this point, China's not going to be a threat. We have naval supremacy. As long as we've got a better quality navy, navy by them, by 2030, we'll be fine. Okay, we have enough political power to go to stable growth now. So it's only 3.9 we're losing. We can up the tax rate for the corporate and population, but it will slow down our construction efficiency. So we're better off actually going down with uh, minusing our corruption. Prioritizing that. I think we reaffirm NATO. It's the 24th of May 2000, and the election is in November at the end of the year.
Uh, Indonesia won their war. Nice. France has an investment offer. Let's accept that. Let's build a French factory in Maryland. Data point files, chapter 11 for bankruptcy. We could bail them out. We have the money. It will also strengthen our opinion with Wall Street. But we do get a... Oh, that's 150 political power. That's actually huge. I'm nearly tempted to do that. Because then we're going to be able to switch things over to modest corruption. And we're better reaffirm NATO as well. Which will give us an additional 100. Because I do still want to... Drop down some of these governmental expenditures. Right, reaffirm NATO has been complete. Politically, I think we'll go down the big two. And then go with a balanced approach for both parties. Alright, unfortunately Spain and Israel aren't paying us for some reason. So we're going to have to cancel our production lines that are currently present uh, in their countries. Okay. Yeah, we definitely need more Senate and House support. So we'll try and increase those measures. We might even pay the farm subsidy as well. It will cost us more money, but it'll get us more senators on our side because we've got an upcoming election soon. All right, let's increase our production efficiency and let's get some early 2000 uh, 3D printers. Dude, we can even get CRISPR as well. <laughs> Some gene uh, tech, which is quite cool. So that's what we're going for at the moment. Just increasing our industry. Alright, we're currently minus 2.8 billion. So we might reduce the budget. Once we start occupying and conquering countries, we are going to be able to get our budget back in balance. 844 billion we're currently in debt so we really need to try and reduce that as best we can before it goes too crazy i want to get to a good position before the financial crash in 2008 all right we might as well go with the u.s army because in a couple years we will be at war hey here we go election campaign heating up let's go Will Bill Clinton win? Or will the Republican Party take over? Oh, they actually got a headway over the Democrats. The Republicans are 43%. We might be able to push some stuff through. All right, hang on. We can invite a controversial speaker. Okay, so this is like a a, a check, which is interesting. So we might actually be, get, be able to gain that percentile back. Oh, and it gave us a much-needed boost. Nice, so we're a little bit more competitive than uh, what we were. Oh, so unfortunately it was inconclusive. Damn. Alright, so we have enough Senate and House support now to... I think it's probably not a bad idea to invest in the American economy. Alright, so we need to form a new government. Oh, so that's interesting. So you can actually invite the constitutionalists or the progressives if you wanted to form a government. I think we'll just try and wait to see what happens. We do lose 300 political power, which is quite a bit, but sometimes you can take the hit and not form the government completely. It's like ruling in a majority or a minority. I suppose. I also eventually want to grant Guam and Puerto Rico statehood as well. But it's interesting that to push through economic reforms, we do actually need to... ...have a House and Senate support. Alright, so here in that tab, we can basically ban political parties if we want. So there's no one we can really draw with, because we haven't got non-aligned or... A a large progressive or constitutional base. So, like, if we flipped it over to the Republican Party, they would have to form a coalition. Um, so, I guess we'll try and save up the political power and take the hit. Oh, no. Bill Clinton's been overthrown. How's that? <laughs> Al Gore is currently the president now. Oh, okay. 
Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so Bill Clinton in the 2000 election got thrown out. Okay. Interesting. Nice. We've got some land doctrines here that we can assign. Naval and air as well. In the future at some point. I think we'll upgrade the economy to semi-consumption. We eventually want to go down globalized trade. Once we've got an abundance of resources, this is where we're going to be able to make so much money. While trying to get the debt down. Yeah, I want to try and get it down before the financial crash. So we're making $7 billion a day now. Okay, we've unlocked some of these points. We can improve our Air Force Doctrine. Oh god, the housing bubble. Gotta watch out for that. Nice, we can upgrade to fast growth now. We actually eventually want to get to economic boom. You gotta be really quite careful with your political power in this. Because due to events, you can uh, lose a lot. Alright, let's uh, continue to improve the American economy. Nice, we're doing quite well. We've got an investment offer from Japan. Uh, Switzerland joins the UN. Nice. That's pretty big. That's pretty huge. All right, so we've can we've created some jobs on the West Coast. We probably eventually want to strengthen the Federal Reserve. Maybe get some jobs on the East Coast as well, along with other industry throughout the US. No, oh, here we go. Things have just been kicked off. Well, looks like we're going to be going to war soon. Oh, nice. So we can actually do a bunch of demands here as well once we get the political power. I think we'll stand united politically. It'll give us a decent stability because we need to have the country stable. And we also need to get the war support going as well. That's a lot of political power, but no, yeah, I think this is an important service to attend. Alright, let's save up some of the political power. And we'll try and do these demands. <laughs> Al Gore's speech. <laughs> oh, just as we shall bring, and it shall be swift. Al Gore. Oh, God. <laughs> Al Gore's war on WT. Oh, that's funny. Well, let's try and um, demand his extradition, I suppose. And we'll see what they say. And, of course, they refuse. Fused. All right, so looks like we're going to have our first war in the east before we move on to executing Operation Freedom. So it's currently the 5th of June 2001 and things are heating up in the world, I suppose. Alright, so we've announced the plan. We can establish the homeland security. We need to set up a new administration in the east. We can partition the UN for the invasion. Yeah, like they're going to accept that. And establish a center in Cuba. Alright, so we haven't got any of the political power for this, so we need the... Patriarch done, and we also essentially need to send volunteers to our allies in the north. So we'll send an interventional, um, an intervention force. Who can we send? The problem is fuel's probably going to be a problem up here. So maybe we send our best and brightest first special forces group and see how they do because they're operating in quite mountainous terrain 
so we'll just chuck a general in, Richie Clark, sure, and we'll send that in. Damn, I wish we could send more military forces, but they're only just holding in the north here. All right. So it's going to take a little bit before they arrive. And I wonder... Okay, so it looks like the British, the Germans, the Belgians, even the Iranians might help. I think we'll send some support equipment. Just to help on out. Oh god, they are not looking good here. Okay, so they've accepted the land lease. Um, I can embargo these guys, so that's probably not a bad idea. And we can't war deck them straight up, so we're going to have to essentially prop up these rebels and see if we can help. Alright, let's unpause, wait for our special forces to be dropped in. Um, yeah, we want to go down with this now. We want to enact this. Nice, so they've uh, arrived in the Northern Alliance. Oh god, that's another huge event. Oh wow, there's a civil war here. Against the non-aligned. And yeah, of course him. <laughs> Alright. I wonder if Turkey's going to get involved there. Alright, so... Oh, they seem to be pretty outnumbered here. But we've got our first war of the series. Trying to help out our... Northern Alliance boys. Yeah, so it looks like the UK is getting involved. Typical. I'd imagine some Australian forces will come over here soon. Alright. So, we'll try and get a breakthrough. Man, Japan is really trying to influence the United States economy. I'm going to be accepting them so much. Yeah, so I think we'll just we'll try and get a breakaway, and we'll try and swing around and surround them in Kabul. That would probably be the play. Yeah, I think fuel, getting fuel in here would be the problem. So, we'll operate with our special forces, especially in this mountainous region as well. We're probably better having small, lighter, tactical groups. I hope that more NATO members get involved to help out and send reinforcements. Alright, so we've got some French here as well. Oh, dude, there's a bunch. Got some Italians, some Poles. Hell yeah. We've got a really nice, strong coalition forming nice so this is what we want so if we can make a front line here or something and let's go with an offensive line to Kandahar yeah so let's swing around that way and we should be able to surround them we kind of just need to guide the northern alliance AI as best as we can because if we can open up a nice path, let's go with economic boom as well. We're gonna be we're gonna be absolutely making money. Yeah, we should be able to surround them. Still gonna be a close war here, but it's interesting that we're not actually actively in this. We're sending volunteers, so that's probably what's gonna happen the majority in the campaign. Nice, we're making a decent amount of money, so we can pay off some of this eight hundred billion debt. Which has accumulated quite a bit. But so far, we've made a two-tile progression. But things are really kicking off here in the east. We've lost 1k, they've lost 2. Yeah, you can't track our volunteer forces though. Alright. Oh, they're actually pushing in the south big time. Yeah, we can't give them air support. That's the problem. Alright, so it looks like that special forces pincer is working. But they're really flanked around and capitulated from the side. Oh no, we've got them now. It's a GG. It's going to be a massive encirclement now. 
So I suppose you could, if you lose this war, you can't really do Operation Freedom. It might like brick your game. An investment offer from the French. Let's accept that. Nice. The Aussies are pushing into Kabul, along with the Italians. They don't seem to be in NATO for whatever reason. Yeah, I think I remember reading that for whatever reason, the modern day mod, the Italians ten tend to always leave NATO. Nice. The Northern Alliance took five states. They seized 168 equipment. And now there's a new regime in charge. Nice. Currently not aligned. If we can get it on a Western outlook, that would be ideal, rather than emerging. If we can move this country away from the CSTO Ruski sphere of influence, that would be great. And we also might try and get House and Senate support to increase the American uh, economy. Nice. Al Gore has had his <laughs> first successful operation, I suppose. Alright, so... We need to install a new government. Oh god, this is controversial. This is not going to bite us in the ass, whatever we do. Yeah, I guess we go... We, we fought for it, so I guess we go with pro-Western, but... Obviously, historically, that didn't work out quite well. <laughs> Alright, but now they're mostly Western Outlook, so maybe we just need to continually support them. Uh, let's... Yeah, let's... Oh, maybe we need a... Maybe we need a build... Yeah, let's properly create homeland. And, like, bring in the TSA or whatever. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So he ended up winning over here. That's not good for me. Alright, so we're still a little bit away before the 2004 expansion of NATO. I wonder if you actually meant to hit it on these year dates, or can you just do them whenever you want? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we try and reassure Japan. They've been building a lot of investment in our territory, so we've probably got pretty good relations with them. Alright, let's... uh partition the UN and we're probably about to kick things off with Operation Freedom. We do have some small military forces down in the south and the Navy. But we'll see what they have to say. There's no way we can partition the UN. They're probably more than likely going to decline it and make it a legal war. Yeah, so they declined it. I guess we're going to go for it. Well, yeah, we want to continue on. <laughs> we want to go for the invasion anyway, regardless of what they say. Alright, so let's drop an embargo. So it's the 12th of November, 2001. Oh, we probably need to run war support. And we're currently reassuring Japan. Still going to be a couple hundred days before this stuff is even complete. Oh, yes, the case between the US and Microsoft. I suppose we go with not guilty to strengthen Wall Street's opinion. Well, we're two days away from probably getting the war deck on them. We've got our Air Force operating over the top. It's the 5th of September 2002. I wish we could actually push from Saudi territory, because that's where it sort of happened in real life. We only can push from Kuwait here, so we want to try and keep... Casualties at a minimum, and we'll get our navy to dominate the seas from the Persian Gulf to the Arabian Sea. I doubt they're going to have any forces down here, but you never know. And as NATO is a defensive alliance, we're probably not going to have that many support. Unless we call some countries in. Nice, so we can straight up war deck them now if we want. And I think we will. Let's have uh, Operation Freedom here today. Nice. Let's go. Let's go f try and find those um, WMDs. Okay, yeah, so we can't call anyone in. So, I think they captured the capital with only 
it was it was it was it was a matter of days, twelve or twenty or so. So if we could create a similar feat, that would be insane. Okay, so there's only a small amount of territory here that we own from our naval base, or our military base. We're trying to make a front line here, and once we gain more territory, we can bring in more forces. Yeah, so Turkey can't come in from the north. Looks like Israel's coming over to help as well. So we want to try and push them out of Basra as quickly as possible. The Germans are giving us some help. They're dropping in supplies. And it looks like the Iraqis are moving up with some Soviet tanks. Our new modernized US tanks could should make quick work of them. Australia wants sent to send some volunteers, which is nice. Our resources aren't in the best. Canada wants to help out as well. Yeah. I was just curious to see the government type. So most of it is still Western Outlook, which is fine. Alright. We have air supremacy over the top. Let's uh, speed things up, I suppose. Nice, we're making some progression here. There we go. We've taken another tile. Excellent. Well, how about we get you guys to full-on swing north, I think. The more tiles we can get, the better. Then we can justify more reinforcements. We've got the rest of the... US Army... waiting to come on over from Qatar. Dude, we are absolutely carving up the center of the country. Nice. If we can divide and conquer them, the quicker the better. Alright, let's make some more front lines here. Let's get the secondary 18 units to go here. We're just an inferior force. Sorry, we're facing an inferior force. We are the superior force. I think that's what's going on. And let's give out a couple of these minor groups as well to spearhead through here. Nice. But air supremacy is make or break in the modern day mod. You seriously need it. And getting as much ground support capacity as you can. Yeah, so there's been 14k killed. Oh my god. Well, we've only lost 100, which is absolutely nothing. Nice. The lower we can keep that, the more we can keep the public on side. Oh, dude, we got a massive encirclement down in the south here. Nice. Dude, we're having an easier time here than we did in um, Afghanistan. Our fuel's running out, though. Mostly because we've got our navy operating. Nice! So, they have capitulated now. So, we've got a decision to make. Do we puppet? Do we occupy? I think we take the territory. Like, we just full-on annex it. Because, look, in Hearts of Iron 4, we want to try and get... And especially how the, the economy's worked up in this. We want the civilian factories. We want the military. And we also want the resources as well to sell on the market to therefore get more money. So, for all intensive purposes, you could roleplay it like, oh, we're putting in a small minor government, but we really control this territory. Because we're going to want to... Look, set up an American empire. We want to try and take as much territory in and around the east as we can. But our goals... <laughs> plan and preparation for Operation Freedom. And he's, uh... War has, uh, come to flourishing. Fl flourishing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and we've carved out a new chunk of states for the United States. Hell yeah. Is there anything else we can do now? Um, we can send some training missions, which is probably not a bad idea, once we've got spare political power. But, no, I think we're... we're good here at the moment. 
We might make plans to push eastward and westward, but we'll see how we go. But we took them out in quite quick succession. Got these guys to the north as well. I don't think we're probably going to go to war with them. They're our valuable allies. Alright, we need to repair the infrastructure in the country before we focus on building more offices in the US. Yeah, so we've got no... nothing we can do over here. Yeah, I can kind of see why some people's criticism of this mod is that the, um, the national focuses are a little bit short. Dude, we're making 30 billion now. Nice. We're slowly but surely paying off our debts. Um, I suppose we support them. There's a fair few lines I want to go down. I want to expand NATO. I probably want to try and get our influence in Asia going as well. If we can reassure the Japanese, that'd be great. Nice. So we can probably get some better quality infantry equipment. The economy is currently booming under our gore. And we've reduced the debt by 300 billion, which is quite a bit. We're dropping down the corruption as well. Which will make us more money. And we're currently globalized trade economy as well. It's probably not a bad idea to go into this as well. Sweden wants to leave the uh, EU. Um, okay. We want to eventually get them into NATO. We currently got the house support, but we don't have the senatorial. Uh, we probably can go down... Uh, I wanted to go down balanced approach. Eventually, because we went down the big two before. Yep, so that's where I want to go down. I don't really care who's in power, whatever. There's both positives and negatives for either side. The Democrats are now ahead. The Populist Party is now the third largest. Alright, coming currently going with democratic ideals. And there's an election coming up next year as well. We eventually want to strengthen the Federal Reserve. But uh, things are doing pretty good here today. We're slowly but surely building up the uh, American Empire. Alright, we're going to try and grant statehood to Puerto Rico and Guam. We've been saving up to do that, because that would really help. We have 100% of the House support, and we've got 60% of the Senate as well. So our goal is pretty popular at the moment. Alright, we're going to strengthen the Federal Reserve now. Oh, shit. Oh, we're going to be at war, eh? Wait, what? I can't believe he's attacked them. Hang on. Oh, no, they brought in CSTO. Shit. Because, they, yeah, their independence is guaranteed by them. Oh, no, they joined the Axis of Resistance. And now their forces are on alert. <laughs> oh, we're not guaranteeing their independence. Oh, fuck. As if we're not. Oh, that's bullshit. Oh, no. We're going to lose one of our major allies in the East here because we can't help them. Because I don't want to go to war with CSTO because we eventually want to phase out the Axis of Resistance. Shit. There's no focus tree over here. No, because then we abandon NATO and then we do our own alliance with them. Ah, oh, fuck, that's huge. 
Oh no, they're probably going to be crushed, actually. Well, what can we do? We can send some... Volunteers. But we only can send one. Oh, dude, they're going to overthrow the... The pro-Westerners. Shit. Well, I guess we just try and send them... As much shit as we can. We've got 30k in stockpile, so let's send 75 a month. Let's equip them with, well, better quality equipment. Uh, what what are we like? Is there any vehicles that we we've got a bunch of? We haven't got too many javelins. We give them some arty. Oh, we've actually got a bunch of. Oh wow, well, we'll just give them that then. We've got a bunch of equipment we've somehow managed to yoink from our previous conquests. <laughs> oh hell, we've got a bunch of them. Holy shit. Alright, let's just try and send that to them. Oh, damn. Well, maybe we need to go around there and guarantee a bunch of countries to secure their independence because, yeah, it's not realistic that the US wouldn't get involved if these guys got attacked. Like, for example, although Australia isn't in NATO, we are, our independence is guaranteed by the US through various packs now. Ah, oh, shit. They're probably going to overthrow them and put in a um, pro... emerging outlook... government. Shit. Oh, they are receiving a ridiculous amount of military aid, though. Alright, wait for our reinforcements to get here. But things are really kicking off here in the east. Alright, we're here. We've got some special forces. Oh my god, they're really... Swinging south. To be, to be fair, we've kind of disrupted the balance of power here. Like, we managed to take out a country. I guess from their perspective, they're like, Yeah, well, why can't we do the same? Not have EU backing. <laughs> a UN backing, rather. Oh, shit. Well, they're currently holding for now, but it's not looking good. Alright, we got some fighting here. Oh, bloody hell. At least the Federal Reserve is um, secure. Well, well, we'll just try and sit here and try and hold them off as best we can. If we can hold them for six months, we uh, might be able to sue for peace. The Axis of Resistance and CSTO has attacked them. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go right in um, because we weren't guaranteeing their independence. But unfortunately, there's some military forces invading in the south. So I don't know how much longer... Um, they're going to last. So we're going to have to go for the 2004 NATO expansion. And we also probably should go around and guarantee independence of a lot of countries. Because we can't straight up war deck them. Um, we can't get the justify war goal. So I think that's the way we're going to have to get involved into some of these wars and conflicts. So if you like the sound of that, uh, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Here today as well, we're going to try to continue to expand and conquer more territorial gains for us. Get more resources so we can get that... Well, it's now $600 billion worth of debt down. Um, we'll also just go around and guarantee countries like Australia and the such. Uh, for some reason, Italy is not in NATO. I think that they do have a tendency to drop out for whatever reason, but it's not looking good here. Yeah, unfortunately, they're just going to be taken out, I think. Ah, uh, look at this. 
They're really quite expanding in the south. Shit. Oh no. They're about to be flipped or puppeted. Oh, we might even guarantee these guys as well, to be fair. The last thing I want is for them to take more territory of mine here. But we complete, uh, successfully completed Operation Freedom in the last episode. And we'll try and to continue to take more territory. Oh shit, now it's been puppeted. Oh no, they've capitulated. Oh, and they've been swung on, on over to an emerging outlook. Shit. We can justify a war goal on them. But then it's going to bring in... CSTO, shit. Ah, oh, that sucks. That sucks so much. Alright, we'll eventually get, um... Retribution on them. Eventually, but now we, we really need to expand NATO, I think. And go around and guarantee as many countries independence as we can. I'm surprised that we weren't at the start. That's annoying. So... Yeah, we can't... Oh, no, we can declare war upon them. And the Ruskies. I don't know why. Well, let's... Yeah, so sometimes you can justify a war goal. Well, let's do that then. Because that's going to bring in them as well. Yeah, if we can take these two countries out, that'd be brilliant. And then we can set up a really nice... Sphere of influence in the east. But yeah, we need to... Rapidly expand NATO. Alright, let's uh, set up some front lines. Because we want to try and get our debt down as much as possible before the um, the GFC rears its ugly head in um, 2008. And we'll probably try and just full on annex these territories as well. Because we want the resources. Having resources and trading them is a great way to make money in this game. Alright, we've got some more fresh recruits. And let's uh, swing them over to the east. We probably should set up our air supremacy as well. Because that's what really won the war early on. I can't recommend focusing on your air force enough. It is basically make or break in this game. Quite often we have the technology and technologically superior army and air force. Just combines that. Nice. Romania, Lithuania, Bulgaria have all joined NATO. Fantastic. Uh, we probably should guarantee the independence of... The Kurds as well, to be honest. I think we'll leave as New Zealand. <laughs> they they could be fine. They're not going to get attacked by anyone. This might complicate things. Oh, what about um, Korea? Yeah, let's uh, guarantee the South. Nice. So we brought in the um, the Baltic states. Well, yeah, I don't think you have to do it by the year, but I think we'll just continue to expand it. Fuck it. Right. We've got enough political power to expand the military-industrial complex. So let's get some defense companies in. Let's get Lockheed Martin. <laughs> and, like, Raytheon as well, probably. Nice. We've unlocked the new small arms upgrade. A year early as well. The M4A1, the MK17, or the SCAR. Alright, so... Guam and... Puerto Rico now officially U.S. states. 
And we've continued to furtherly expand NATO. Nice. So this is like a proper state here now. The only problem is, rath rapidly expanding can be a problem if they're not all Western Outlook. Because I think we'll just continue to go down this. I'm surprised how aggressive CSTO were to try and take them out and puppet them. So we've got to be careful. Uh, let's send some CT counter missions to reduce the worldwide threat. It does use... Um, Army experience. So we'll get that. We also try and upgrade the Bradleys as well. Alright, so we've befriended the minor countries. We want to try and befriend some of the majors. Then we'll try and make our way down to peace in Europe. We might even invite Sweden, Finland as well. There's even a bunch of guarantees here we can get. Alright, looks like there's going to be another election. And Al Gore is probably going to win it. <laughs> What a crazy turn of events. Bill Clinton um, lost the leadership of the Democratic pub, uh, Party. So it does look like the Democrats are more popular at the moment. 45% compared to everyone else. Um, so it looks like the national outlook is growing. So we'll attack them. Oh good, we got the RNG to reduce it further. But it looks like these wars in the East have been beneficial to his political base in strengthening it, Al Gore. <laughs> There's not really much else we can do. We can change the flag if we want. No, I don't want to do that. But we will have to get vengeance on the axis of resistance. Alright, we'll see how we go. Oh no, it's dropped again here. So, I don't know if he's going to be able to form a government. He might not have enough points. Where is it? Here. Yeah, okay. So, we can't invite any of the constitutionalists or the populists or the US military party. I could give up and let the Republicans try and form a government. No, but they've got less than us. Maybe if that gets high at one stage, we might look to switch on over. It's just if we fail to form the government, we essentially rule a minority again and then lose a chunk of political power, which we might just have to do. Then there's always a chance that Al Gore could potentially lose the leadership. But it's like, whatever. I think we'll just sort of let it go through events. Like, We've got a run of Democrats at the moment in the early 2000s. As we get a little bit later, maybe in the 2010s, it might switch over to the Republicans, whatever. We'll just let it naturally grow. I'm not really... I don't really care about influencing either one of them. You know what I mean? We'll just let it sort of naturally occur. Brazil wants an investment. Wants to be allowed to invest in the states. We'll accept that. But it's interesting how the constitutionalists are growing. And this other outlook is growing as well. I still want to try and keep Western as best we can. Alright. Battlefield support is what I want to go with. With our Air Force. Um, let's expand some more ties with our companies. Although that's ahead of time penalty, it's still only 190 days, so it's not that excessive. When it's like a thousand, eight hundred, it can be a little bit annoying. Alright, an investment offer from the UK will accept that. Yes, we lose 300 political power. Alright, so no, Al Gore is still in charge. 
and the next election will be 2008, and that will be his last time that he's uh, allowed to run, because that will be the end of his two terms in office. Damn, we've got some more <laughs> house uh, problems. Shit. Okay, we're only a couple days away from being able to declare war and get things going. Get some vengeance from what happened in the Levant. All right. Whatever. Let's just get a bunch of licensed companies in. I think that'll look cooler. Ah, oh, Sweden leaves the EU. Nice. Our justification has now finished. And we'll try and kick things off. Now, in theory, everyone should come in, but you never know, they might not. Like, Turkey, you'd think, would come in. But I could be wrong. Alright. Let's declare war. The US is at war. Let's go. Yeah, so we can't call anyone in. So we're all with three factions, so it's probably only us. At the moment, it seems to be about 60% in our favor, 55 and some others. Once the Air Force starts flying and running their drills, they'll be able to give us aerial supremacy. Uh, Navy-wise as well, actually, it's probably more imperative and vital that we get them operating here in the Gulf. Because we might be able to destroy some of their tankers. Okay, so it doesn't look like they're going to call them in. Interesting. So it looks like we're only fighting here on the eastern flank before. Yeah, because if we were... Our, if we puppeted them, the territory we're now in, we might be able to attack from within their territory, but... Look, the Turks are coming down here to help. Yeah, so it's only us, because we are in a defensive alliance rather than an offensive. We can't even get to their territory that's been tucked in here. Ugh, so we might not be able to go to war with... ...them in the west. We might have just to focus on this eastern front, because this is where the... ...war justification in Cassus Belly was. We haven't taken... Okay, we're, ta we're starting to take tiles here now, slowly. We've lost a hundred to their 20k. Nice. Once again, need to keep losses at a minimum. Yeah. Like, we had a million pop, now we're at about 800k. You don't need crazy pop like you do in um, Vanilla Hearts of Iron. You can really rely on like a smaller pop if you've got the air force supremacy nice it's shocked up to 40k while well, we're still keeping it about 200 I would say we're definitely winning the war and we're slowly but surely making our way towards the capital as well we should be able to walk through the streets of Tehran very soon Yeah, they're just not calling them in, which is interesting, because we can't even move from our own lands. Maybe. Because it's who's guaranteeing them. I don't know. Only a couple more victory points here before we can... conquer and claim the entire country. Although Turkey can't... actually help... They're just going to move military forces into my territory by the look of it. And we've basically cut it off now in half. 
Oh, it does look like they're getting some volunteer forces. Helping them out. But I think it's going to be too little too late. Still 250. Oh my god, we've nearly managed to knock out 100k. Those losses are really significant. I think we had an easier time earlier in the last war compared to this one. Nice. So now we occupy all of the lands of Persia. Yeah, well, let's just straight up annex them. <laughs> And uh, bring in martial law. Nice. So. We've managed to hold those responsible to what happened. But it's a shame we couldn't go after their other... Faction political members, which were kind of culpable as well, these guys. Yeah, we can't justify against them. That's a shame. They didn't call them in. Cowards. Anyway, we've expanded our territory further in the east. Oh, it looks like the western outlook's coming back, even though they are a puppet of them. Damn shame. Anyway, let's try and repair the country. We don't want to leave it in rabbles and ruins. We want to use it. And we need to manage the occupied territories as well. But everything is still relatively stable. Alright. I think we continue to expand and we'll try and bring in more of these countries. Now the only problem is you do have to keep an eye on if they're non-aligned or pro-Western or what because you can sometimes waste essentially the um, focus tree. It's still interesting that we can still justify against them continually. Right. So they've accepted that nice. Same with them. Same with Sweden and Finland. Perfect. Because that's what you need to do. You need to keep offensive wars to a minimum. While mostly guaranteeing independence. Or factions. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to join in our alliance or not. It'll be interesting. Alright, we might need to go down this other path, firstly. Well, I kind of want to get them in as quick as possible. Let's invite Bosnia Herzegovina. And we want to get back to economic boom. Because what happens when the housing crash occurs, you switch down to stagnant and growth, stable growth. So we're still in 2005. So it's interesting that you can't constantly have a booming economy and start like making heaps of money. It does try to stop you. Nice, they accepted. Um... Yeah, let's go down this way. I think we choose them. Because they're not a pro uh, an established country just yet. In 2005. We probably should upgrade some of these vehicles. Eventually as well. So what's outdated? Oh, right. The ICVs. Um, it just costs civilian factories, which is kind of annoying. All this... Espionage stuff from the La Resistance DLC. I might actually move you, potentially. Yeah, let's move you over here. Do some counter-surveillance. Uh, Bosnia wants a debt bailout. I suppose we grant it because we've got enough money. Look at this, we're only like... 
400 billion in debt now. We're really bringing it down massively. Look, you always want a little bit of debt, but the lower we can get it, the better. We'll make more money. Nice. So we've completely repaired our eastern conquered territories. And now we can build some more office buildings in the US, because that's a really good way to make money in this game. And we're making 21 billion now. Defense, healthcare, welfare is most of our expenditures. As it is the 11th of January, 2006. Okay, let's try and bring in them. Yeah, maybe in hindsight I should have gone around and just tried to guarantee independence of a lot of these factions. Ooh. Yeah, no, I'm not going to bail them out. You guys can quite clearly get fucked. Nice, and they joined. Yeah, maybe I should have expanded well rapidly and going around and... Um, if you're playing like a democratic faction... Like, if you want to be more aggressive in Hoi, you need to be a different style of political lining, I guess. We're making 43 billion. Nice. So we can increase some of the spending. Because I believe as well, when you increase healthcare, welfare, and... Um, Hospital funding. I believe your political party gets stronger as well. Like, more of the populace like you, which is quite interesting. And when you remove it as well, if you go into debt, they get angry. <laughs> Man, this is a good mod. This is absolutely fantastic. The modern day mod basically had, had so many issues when I played it five years ago. Mostly due to army supply. And I think they've really fixed that because these, because sometimes you wouldn't be able to take the territory like we did. We can probably nearly go with like advanced healthcare. We're getting our debt down. Like there's, there's even like a really cool sort of mini game with it. I would highly recommend this mod. You do have to roll back the version, um, but yeah, highly recommend the Millennium Door mod. It's uh, a lot of fun. Still trying to drop down our debt. Just the lower we can get, the better. Because if we can get, if we can get to like a huge war chest in our treasury, we're going to be able to hopefully survive the global financial crisis, which is coming up in a couple of years. Which we're probably going to have to swing this stuff back. Ah, they refused membership. Fascinating. And is that because they're, yeah, because they needed to be more Western. Okay, that's alright. A shame, though. Well, anyway, let's go with peace in Europe, because we want to try and get these other member states in. Conflict. We could go down that, if we want a Cassus Billy. I'm sure we'll eventually get one. Okay, let's uh, send some more training where we can as well. International recognition? No, I think that's fine. We don't want to change the flag. Uh, we probably can expand some of the resources here. It does cost house and senate positions, so then we have to combat that. Ah, Sweden joined. Hell yeah. That's fantastic. Dude, we have rapidly expanded massively. <laughs> and it's only 2006. Crikey. Well, let's invite them. Yeah, I wonder if Georgia will join. Georgia. Georgia on my mind. Maybe. I don't know. Let's even sign a non-aggression pact. The more countries we can get that border them, the better. Oh, and it switched back to Western Outlook. Oh, hilarious. So, I guess 
democracy um, worked its way out because they <laughs> voted out the pro uh, Kremlin government, I guess. But they're still a puppet of them, which is rather annoying. But I guess as long as they're Western, that's okay. Oh, shit. I've been keeping an eye on um, the wars that have been going on, but we actually might be able to... Obviously not back him. Oh, okay. Well, let's get um, Hillary Clinton to... <laughs> I, I suppose... Lead the... Uh, operations here. Fuck me. Alright, yeah, so I guess we support the non-aligned rather than the emerging... Although they're nearby... Oh, we can actually war deck them. Or maybe we can attack them later. Because we can actually send forces over there. Alright, well... Once again... Let's, uh... Prop up some more rebels. We, it's interesting that we can't attack... Him, but we can attack the non-aligned, which doesn't really make much sense. Oh, we've actually expanded that we can send two... Military forces. Well, anyway, let's, um... Get a couple of these guys. So let's get... Maybe one special forces unit and then like one infantry brigade. Yeah, let's do that and we'll send Robert. Fuck it. Quickly change the color so it's easier for me to see. So we'll make it red for example. And no, I don't want to send that to you. I want to send it to him. It will also allow us to get our military experience up that we can spend. So we'll improve relations with these. We might even embargo them. Yeah, we'll do that. And we'll wait for those reinforcements to get here. Oh, Finland's probably going to join as well. Nice! We're doing really quite well. And they're probably in. <laughs> Hell yeah! That's fantastic. We've got the GFC coming around the corner. Thankfully, we've managed to reduce national debt by about half under Al Gore. Al Gore. <laughs> and uh, the economy's looking good until it, well, eventually collapses nearly. All right, our divisions have arrived as we're backing the centrist party here. Let's get a non-aggression pack with them. Let's also prop them up with sending them some logistics. So let's send... Should we just do one off or should we send them monthly? I just need to remember to cancel it. So maybe now let's just give them a bunch. So let's give them a thousand and we'll give some support equipment as well. We also should have a bunch of spare equipment lying around for the countries we conquered previously and territory that we gained so if we manage to put these guys in power we might actually be able to use the war deck on them the war goal if we want uh, we can't propose trade even though i'd like to influence our western sphere of influence but still pretty close at the moment Alright, we're going to be able to bring in two divisions. One special forces group, the other one just an infantry brigade. And we'll set a front line and we'll see how we go. The military aid has been accepted as well. Nice. But we've managed to carve out a nice piece of territory in the east. And things look quite stable now around the world. Global tensions are at about 58%. Oh, but here we go. The Lehrman brothers have declared bankruptcy. So we've got a couple of options. We can bail them out, but obviously it will cost a bunch of money. Potentially 90 billion. But it will strengthen our opinion of Wall Street. But we're going to have really bad construction and military output. So thankfully we've conquered a lot of territory and we've incorporated a lot more civilian factories and resources into our economy. And now we're fully in a recession. So, we'll try and spend most of my political power to get the economy back on track. 
but we are going to be put into a significant amount of debt. Our defense budget is way spending way too much, same with health and welfare, so we might have to reduce that spending as well. It's not coming at the best time for Al Gore, Al Gore either, as the election is coming around in November 2008. The Democratic Party is still more popular than the Republicans. The Constitutionalists and the Populists have grown. Same with a couple other parties. Alright. Still quite close. They've lost 2k to our allies here that have only lost a little bit. It's still quite risky. Although these special forces are... Definitely got the experience and qualification. We might have been better off to bring a battle tank unit or something instead of two infantry brigades, essentially. It's interesting how the territory's carved up here between desert. There's only a very narrow choke point where the actual fighting can help on out. Yeah, we're still hemorrhaging a bunch of cash. We're currently doing assistance for Japan. Oh, okay. So we can war deck them if they don't pay that back. Well, I guess I have no ambition to go that far south into Africa. So we'll let the debts get nullified, I think. Like, where even is this? Yeah, it's like, yeah, we're not going to be able to actually get there without dropping troops in aerially. If we border a country, it might be an interesting idea. Ah, so that's interesting. So if we pay the debt and then they don't, for a certain amount of... If we give, if we lend them money and then they default on their debt, we get a Cassus Belly against them. Interesting. So that might be a way we can have some more conflicts in the future. Apart from straight up guaranteeing certain countries. But fierce fighting is breaking out. I guess we... Um, oh, God... Bail out another bank. What was it? 800 billion? To start off the campaign. Now it's really back up there. An investment offer from Brazil will accept that. Yeah, so as the financial crisis is kicking off, it does look like more appetite has appeared for other political parties, which is cool. Alright, uh, I think we're going to continue to eventually go down and continue diplomacy in the Asian sphere of influence. Try and get various trade deals with Japan and other countries. We just seem to be trading here at the moment. It seems like they have decent equipment compared to the... Um, well, the Afghan issue we had to deal with. But it does look like Western Outlook is growing here in the country, which is fantastic. It's just a shame we can't sub send more forces. Alright, still hemorrhaging with cash. Still trying to get more trade deals in Asia. We might even have to lend some money to get back in track, because actually going into debt is really bad. Luckily, we're not dealing with a hot war at the moment. Oh, interesting that they betrayed their allies there. Huh. Why are the French supporting them? Uh, but there, hmm. We can. That's interesting. So we can war deck them. Hmm. That could be a potential option. Yeah, maybe we just do it. Because we do want to try and... Weed out the faction... Of the Axis of Resistance. We already knocked out their partners in the last episode. And then does need to be some consequences for what happened in the Levant. And he was one of the prime culprits, so 
We should go after him. Oh shit, they actually flipped there. <laughs> That's not good. We can still war deck them. We are making some progress here now. And we seem to be winning. We might be able to take our first piece of territory. Nice. Yeah, it looks uh, massively more in our favor. Okay, so there's a merger. I think we just continue to bail them out. Well... Yeah, we don't want inflation to get any higher. I think we'll just keep on bailing everyone out and then we'll make the money back eventually. So the Bear and JP Morgan Chase merger. Uh, merger. Oh, nice. We're really making some decent progress here, which is fantastic. Yeah, if we could get an ally here in uh, North Africa, that would be fantastic. And even if they don't come on our side, we can eventually war deck them if we want. Oh, okay, they just got puppeted. In the north, interesting. We're still justifying against them. So it's still quite a while before we can go to war. But things are looking uh, looking good here. We just need to hold our territorial gains. A third party's gained power. Uh, just a little bit back and forth, actually. Oh, wow. So our allies have lost 3k. While they've lost a little bit more. What the fuck is this? Polynesia? <laughs> what? As if they're fractured politically. What? I don't even know where Polynesia is. I should do. It's in my neck of the woods. Oh, so it's here. Oh, okay, we've got to be careful there because there is American Samoa down here. Which is slightly in our southern Asian sphere of influence. Uh, I guess we offer another loan. Jeez. No, we don't want to bail out Polynesia, no. I'd rather not. We're inviting Japan to NATO, though. Alright. We could actually recognize the government here. So that, in the long term, is probably not a bad idea. But it's really back and forth at the moment. Unfortunately, we actually lost one of our... Division, so we're going to probably have to send another one soon. Okay, we switched from a stagnant and stable to a fast growing economy. Hey, the end of the American recession. Nice. So we should be out of the woods of the, um, the GFC. So we should be able to go back to economic. Boom. Yeah, so it's like back and forth. You need to keep an eye closely on your governmental expenditures. And then constantly um, get the policies going. Oh, did they capitulate? Did they? Oh, nice. They ended up taking control of them. Hell yeah. Well, let's continue to improve relations. I would like to propose trade, but yeah, hopefully we can grow that Western outlook here. And we've influenced our ideology in uh, North Africa, I suppose. And then we can clear all those agreements that we had going. We don't need to supply them any further. We can use it somewhere else. Nice. So it looks like we were <laughs> successful there, I suppose. We can even justify a war goal against them, even if we wanted to. Which I don't think I will. It's interesting that when the world had tensions high enough, democratic, Western, outlooking factions can declare um, war goals against certain factions. Oh, Japan's about to join NATO though. Hopefully. And we've still got this justification going as well. Which, sh which uh, should hopefully be complete. It looks like Al Gore is still popular. And same with the Democrats. Oh, 
And our divisions have returned as well. Nice. And what are the Japanese going to say? Where are they? Oh, did they decline, did they? Oh, shit. Oh, we might have to wait a day. Did they join? Hey, Japan joins NATO. Fantastic. Nice. A little bit weird, them being a part of the North Atlantic Treaty, but whatever. And we might even do the same for them and eventually work our way down to Korea. Oh, God. Our debt has significantly grown again. We haven't even put up the population tax. All right. This declaration should be complete as well. We've got all our armies on the border. Navy's here as well. We don't even need the Air Force. So, let's attack them and get things underway. We should make this... This war should be really quite swift. Now... Uh, you'd think the Turks would come in and help, but I have a feeling that we're not going to be able to push in the north because... Yeah, it's technically Turkish territory. We can go from the US territory. Oh, Angela Merkel is now the German Chancellor. Fantastic. <laughs> Alright. Oh, dude, we're just rolling on in. And we're probably going to be at it. Get rid of this faction quite quickly. Yeah, look at this. We even had a port strike here. Nice. And we might even be able to take Thai Air, which is massive. About to take the Raqqa airstrip. Only 200 lost here now. Before we topple this regime. All right, it's got to about 400 now. So overall, with conquering these three ca uh, countries in the east, we've only lost like under a thousand, which is like absolutely nothing. Come on. Nice, we won. And we also managed to take out their puppet as well. And we'll do the same of what we've done mostly everywhere else. Just full on take the states. And having full control of them. So we can trade and sell those resources on the market. 15 states taken. 16k. Equipment as well. And we do have to occupy the territories properly. And install some law and order. Nice. Hell yeah. We really expand NATO's influence here and secured this territory. Oh, shit. Wait, why did that pop up? I guess it was different. No, I was looking at the Georgia issue there because now we can't invite them into our faction, which is annoying. And everyone else was sending military aid and stuff. Uh, okay. That's interesting that they've gone and done that. But here is our expansion, though. Huh. We're so much in debt at the moment. We could do that, actually. Because then we can influence... the Ruskies a bit. Yeah, 20%. That's not too bad. But we already have a... justification against them. Maybe we try and improve relations. I don't know. We might be able to cause some civil strife and fact and uh, fractal and faction uh, factionism uh, in their country. 
Okay, we need to reduce stuff again, because our expenditure is through the goddamn roof. Which is going to make the party really quite unpopular, but we need to get things back in track. The problem is as well that we're essentially providing uh, universal health care to the entire territories that come under our statehood. So even these territories in the east basically get it. So that's what the problem is. Like, even when we've taken this land, we've actually increased our available pop by nearly double. So we need to get the budget back on track again. It's ballooned. Oh, okay. They've announced. That's interesting. We still want to try and invite them. Which might anger the Shanghai pack, but we'll see how we go. Alright, so we invited them to NATO. Are they going to accept? Because we don't want to, what happened last time. Not having guarantees and various members. Part of, so let's uh, invite uh, South Korea as well, I think. That would be a smart idea. Hey, they joined. Oh god, we're about to kick things off in 2007, I think. We even have some territory here. Why is that? Oh, it's Hong Kong, maybe. I don't know. No, it's not. That's not correct. Oh, shit. Here we go. They're justifying a um, war against them. Oh, God. Well, it looks like... Because it's going to be an, um, a defense... If they do an offensive war, it's going to bring everyone in. Oh, crikey. Looks like we're about to face the Red Menace, boys. Oh, my God. They're probably going to do it as well. Luckily, they're not in CSTO. Yeah, why do they have military forces here? I actually don't know. I don't mind it that they have these small ports and military bases around because it makes... Instead of doing these naval invasions, which can be quite annoying, well, we actually might need to move our military forces over here. Oh, dude, things are about to kick off. Hell yeah. Well... Let's move all our, ter our units from the east and get them into our overseas territory. I wonder if they were going to attack them at some point anyway. It's pretty early to be doing it. We've definitely got naval supremacy on them. We've definitely got alliances, so we'll move one lot of the armies here. Then we'll get them. We'll put another lot to protect the island. The only problem is logistics and supply. So we'll send one to South Korea, and then we'll send the other one to... Uh, the island of Kyushu in Japan. And we might even get the other one stationed in Okinawa as well. Because if shit kicks, gets kicked off, you would imagine that... The Korean, the Japanese, the Australian and the American Navy are probably going to be... Flying over into the... Like, sailing over into the sea quick, fast. And that's where the fighting is really going to help out. We're going to have to move all our... Air squadrons over as well. But NATO is more than likely going to get called in. Okay, so I wonder if Korea is going to accept. That would be massive. Vietnam would be nice. Our forces have arrived. We're also defending the island and all those what, valuable computer chip supply. I've set up the navy as well. So we should have naval supremacy in the seas. And South Korea has joined as well. Fantastic. Just in case the north gets any ideas. They're technically un unaligned. January 2008. I wonder after this will the party still be popular. We can even war deck them now if we want. But no, we're going to wait for them to attack us. Definitely. Bringing Vietnam in on the border would really quite help. Because that northern jungle territory can be quite harsh. But here we go, 29th of January. Are they going to do it? And they have! Wow! 
Well, things are kicking off because we've been brought in instantly. I can't believe the um, CCP did it. Wow. And they're bringing in HK to help them out as well. Alright, we'll call in Japan then and everyone. Oh, God. You wouldn't think this was going to happen until like, I don't know, 2030, 2050. It's happening in 2008 now. Alright, the Navy's being engaged. Let's call everyone in. Germany, France. Fierce fighting is breaking out. When the tiles are so small... It's pretty hard to draw front lines, but... Oh, I wasn't expecting this to kick things off this early on. But it's alright, we can divide it in half, I think. Between us. And, uh... Taipei, I suppose. Right, a little bit of engagement down here in the... Islands. As long as we can hold here. Try and take some territory. Well, all their forces are on alert. If we can take, like, at least one or two tiles, we just need to gain a bit of a beachhead here, and then we can bring all our military forces where we can. We've got some Texas and Raptors airborne. But let's try and push and make um, a really nice beachhead if we can, if we're struggling to go overall. We've got air supremacy over the top as well. And what would I would love to see happen is if Japan and Korea could do some naval invasions and get some other beachheads. So we can have the largest invasion seen since D-Day. Nice. We're getting some territory here. Oh, God. Naval support. Check. Air support as well. We do have probably technology supremacy because it's this early on. Yeah, 2008. Man, what a crazy alternative timeline. And everyone's coming in. I can't... Thank God we um, brought them into NATO and guaranteed their independence. Holy shit. Because now we're bringing everyone in. If we didn't have NATO support, things might be um, a little bit more tougher. Okay, so we've got enough of a beachhead here. We can bring in more military uh, reinforcements. We are going to be detected, but not now I'm curious to see if any of them will get sunk. Oh man, we smashed the port there. And they are struggling to hold as well. Yeah, so I think if you're playing as a Western Outlook country, playing as, I don't know, Germany the States or the UK, you basically need to go around and guarantee independence of factions and invite them in. They are getting some help by the look of it. Uh, we are currently slowly but surely running out of oil. We've only got 132 days worth of barrels. Okay, so now we've got a bigger beachhead. Let's try and carve up the country a bit better. Go for a north and west approach. So far we've kept casualties to a minimum. Hopefully it doesn't explode over here now though. But so far they've probably got numerical supremacy. They just don't have the technology or equipment. Okay, so far in the north, we don't have aerial supremacy. Once we get there, we might need a little bit of help. But thankfully, there's a lot of infrastructure here on the coast, so we're good. Oh, dude, they've lost a lot. 28k, shit. I'm just quickly checking that we're not getting a hit from anywhere else. Thankfully, we don't border anyone over here, and they're not inviting anyone else in. Okay, we've got... More additional reinforcements sitting in Japan. We'll try and bring them in. Thankfully, no, none of these units got sunk because sometimes they can be kind of turned into cannon fodder when they move about. But yeah, I'm surprised that there's no 
additional naval invasions coming in, even though we've got control of the seas. We also might just need to keep a full stack of 18 units in the port, because if we lose supply, we're going to be cooked. And if we could get Vietnam in to help us, they could create a secondary front in the south. But so far, everything is looking good for the states here, boys. We might need to delay the election because it's wartime. Didn't FDR have three terms? Because of WW2? One of the only sitting pre presidents to do so, I believe so. That's a fact. Al Gore <laughs> might be able to get a third term. But everything's looking good. Oh, it swung back to about a 50-50 in some areas, and then, then in some we're not pushing that well. Dude, it's going to be way too close. But I think we'll... If we're successful, we'll try and liberate and puppet some of the far western provinces that encompass this country. And then we'll probably divide it in half between myself. And... Our allies. Don't want to speed it too fast, because we've got to be really careful here as we progress. But we're making our way further south. We've got a really nice amount of control. We're pushing towards the river as well. Oh my god, why is it bouncing me over here so much? Okay. Still mostly US and allied forces. There's no, like, European forces in here helping out just yet. Yeah, what's with that, like, square white box flicker that pops up from time to time? Oh my god, they've lost 50k to the 28k. Oh, shit. Alright, we've lost air supremacy there, so we might have to fix that up again. But so far, we're doing well. If it continues this way, we should be able to capitulate them within a year or so. It's the 7th of March, 2008, and so far... We seem to have the upper hand. We're continually flooding more assets into the country. And we're taking tiles left, right, and center. First up, got to say a huge thank you to this month's YouTube channel members. Massive thank you to Divine Overhand, Mikey, Eric, Chuckles, The Hut, Itchy, Green Nero One, Dimitri H, and Hector A. Really appreciate those guys. Becoming a channel member, you get access to the YouTube mod list for this series. All I am using is the Millennium Dawn mod. Because I was recommended um, not to use any other mods because it can cause save file corruptions. Oh shit. They've uh, got a backdoor system there. The Greeks are sending us some help as well. Oh, Vietnam just declared war on Malaysia. That's infuriating, because we're just about to bring them into our alliance. I wonder if they'll accept, though. If they can open up a secondary front in Hanoi, that would be spectacular. They've lost 139k. We've only lost 4k. Thankfully, we're keeping losses at a minimum. But... Us, with our allies, we're really carving up the country. So, I think the plan is we'll divide it in half between myself and Taiwan, I think. But it's mostly just us two at the moment. They join NATO, hell yeah. Can they start taking territory? I'd like so, if they can get involved on in. They're drawing some front lines. Even if they don't join in on the hot war, they could very well drag divisions and military assets away from the front line. 
as fierce fighting is still breaking out. We still have aerial supremacy as well. But I have been reading the comments. Thank you, all, thank you for all the feedback and suggestions. Some of you guys actually wanted me to puppet countries rather than territorially take them, but... Look, the thing is with the modern day mod, I kind of want the factories, the civilian and modern, because they take so long to construct in this game. We also get a small population bonus. We're about to surround a division here. But we also get access to the resources. They left NATO. Why? That's so strange. They were in and they were out. Okay. Uh, anyway, the point I was trying to make is we can also get a bunch of resources at our disposal. That we can sell on the market and make a bunch of money to clear this huge debt that we're in. Although there are some positives to puppeting and changing certain governmental types of countries. You also get their army. And I believe you have priority on their resources they trade. But I think this is the best way to make more money in this game. Straight up conquering territory. Alright, Korean and Japanese forces are now here. Thankfully, this war kicked off in 2008. If this went on for another 10, 20 or so decades, I don't know if we would be able to rapidly carve up the country as we are right now. Our armies are heavily experienced. from our previous wars. We've got some high tier quality veterans and they stand alone. Dude, it's ballooned to half a million losses now. And we've divided the country up into. They're surely about to capitulate. Thankfully we had that um, port that we could get to. France are navally invading here now as well. They're getting involved. Come on, there must be only a couple more victory points before they capitulate. Hey! That's it. We won. Nice. Well... I think what we'll do, hmm, we could sort by valuable, but I also kind of want to reward Taipei, so I think we'll take, like, hang on, maybe, actually, you know what, instead of, so we can take all the states if we want, I think we satellite Tibet and the East here. Make them their own countries. And just see how large they are firstly. So let's liberate them. Yes, yeah, so then we don't have to worry about the rest. Okay, so then we can deal with the North. So I think we take all this. We also do want to reward our allies because they took some heavy losses. To be fair, we lost our most amount of troops in this campaign more than any other as well. Alright, I think I take this for myself because there's going to be a bunch of resources and a bunch of fantastic meals there. And then I think everything south here which still has a bunch of resources. We give it to them. Nice. And then if we ever need to go north against CSTO, we've got a bridge up there. And we've also taken HK. And there might be some small islands here and there. There's nothing to worry about. So let's just take the rest. Look, realistically, you wouldn't be able to control this territory, so you could just roleplay that we've installed governmental structures to hold it. Because, look, the thing is, it's just the way Hearts of Iron is set up. Nice. So it looks like we've reinstalled 
the ROC. And we've brought in, brought in now most of East Asia under NATO rule. And we've got a bunch of military factories and civilian. And we'll try and fix our resource problem as well. Bloody Al Gore. You've done it again. Alright. Let's just try and hold this territory. But, uh... We've been successful, thankfully. So they're definitely pro-Western now. Like, even with that, there's no point of subjugating the others. We might as well just give the, the southern coast to them. You know what I mean? Okay, so now that we've got a bunch of new populace under our control, we do want to try and reduce some of the expenditures. 220 billion, crikey. We haven't even touched tax rate incorporation, so we might need to do that eventually as well. We now have a recruitable manpower pop of just shy of 3 million. It's not like you really need population that much. But look, we've got 94 civilian factories free. We have a whopping 220 now. So we've more than doubled our civilian economy infrastructure. So we're going to be able to put these to work with trade. Like, we're running out of resources, but... It's because we're trading them away. We just need to bring them back. Like, we, we want to make money from trading, but we also... I don't know. We've got to keep the economy going, so... So, there, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Philippines are at war. Kind of weird. And we're probably going to be drawn into it. More than likely. Yeah, just like a weird little war going on. We're making 43 billion now, which is fantastic. If we drop it, we get go down to 70. Jeez. Because it did balloon quite a bit, the debt. To over 600 billion. It was 800 at one point. So we'll try and reduce it as well as time goes on. We've run out of buildings to construct here in the US, which is fantastic. So maybe let's build some... Oh, wait, what? Did... Oh, what? Oh, it must have bugged because I was in a different recruitment theater. Oh, well. Also, let's uh, upgrade the corporate and population tax rate because... We've yet to adjust that. We've got a bunch of civilian factories now and military, so... The main problem is with uh, increasing the tax rate. It does dilute your recruitment time capacity. Oh, lol. The UK triggered Article 50. Looks like Brexit is going to be underway. Alright, well, let's try and reduce this debt back down again. The other parties have seemed to have grown quite a bit since our new territorial territorial conquests. Only 56% towards Western outlook. And it looks like the Republican Party is now more popular than the, than the Democrats for whatever reason. Alright. So we've got an election here now as well, 2008. Now, unfortunately, Al Gore can't serve any more terms, so... If the Democrats are to win... We're going to need a new figurehead of the party. The foreign policy debate. So, hmm. Nationalist, non aligned are probably the weaker two. I think emerging is worse. Because that's what CSTO are. There's also a chance to make them stronger. Yeah, we'll see if we can get the RNG check. Nice, we got it. We dropped it. It was worth the risk.
Uh, I suppose we invite them because it's currently 40% to the other party while only 20% to ours. Nice. Boosted it slightly. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where this election ends up. We might have a new party in charge by the end of it. Eight years of Al Gore with a small minor amount of time under Bill Clinton. Might be time to get a new political class in charge. Okay, where am I looking? Oh, here it is. Form a new cov a government. Jeez. Oh, shit. This is kind of tough. Um, hmm. We can't invite any progressives in to form a government. Dude, we actually might have to give up and let the Republicans have a go. Because they can probably form a coalition with... The constitutionalists and push it through. Um, I wonder if we retire Al Gore. Al Gore brings in Barack. That doesn't really make a difference. It could do though. Uh, Jordan want to bail out or refuse? No, it didn't really change our popularity. I don't reckon we're going to win, and we got to form a government. You know what? How about we give it up and let the Republican Party try and do it? Because they got 35%. If they go with another party, they might be able to form a government. So let's do that. <laughs> George W. Bush has been elected in uh, 2008. Okay, so... We might be able to form a coalition government. Hang on. The timeline's a little bit all over the place. <laughs> but I do kind of like this alternative timeline. Yeah, maybe we can negotiate with the uh, constitutionalists. Yeah, so I think we're better off going with them rather than the populists. Because the Constitutionalists might be, well, more moderate. It's interesting that there are more... ...factions that are easy aligned to them. So hang on. If we welcome them to the team... Yeah, that should be the 50%. Nice. And the new government has been properly formed as well. So, the Republican Party are out now in. However, they are in a coalition government rather than an outright majority. A coalition with the conservative constitutionalists. However, they're not the biggest fan of foreign nation building. We might have been better off to side with the US Army. But we currently rule with a 50% majority. And I wonder if the economic preview will now change now that we have a new president in charge. But yeah, we'll make slow plans and preparations to deal with our last and only enemy on the campaign map. Pretty much. Well, there might be some smaller other countries here today, uh, here and around we might be able to deal with here today, but we basically want to go to... Um, War with CSTO faction, the Alliance, and continue to uh, spread NATO where we can. Um, right. Yeah, no, that's not happening. Oh, shit. Oh, wow, things are kicked off here. Well, hang on. We've actually got troops in the north. <laughs> okay. I can't believe the... Uh, 
the KDRP did that. Because we're going to be able to smash them from the north. Looks like already the south is dominating them though. Well, seeing they're in NATO, it actually might bring everyone in. Because an attack on one is, of course, an attack on all. Yeah, we're going to make quick work of that. We've even got fighter pilots operating in Kyushu. That can be redrawn quickly. But it looks like the South Koreans don't need our help whatsoever. We've been drawn in. And yeah, we can fight in the north. Well, they actually took a tile there. We'll call everyone in. Nice. Well, if we can be successful here today in this war, I guess we'll unite the peninsula. Like, I don't need this northern territory. We've lost zero. We've lost 1k of coalition to their 6k. Dude, I'm surprised they did that. <laughs> they don't have any self-preservation. We've taken back the tiles that we lost. And it looks like... George W. Bush... is going to have his... first conflict here. We're about to roll into the streets of Pyongyang. Yeah, it looks like they were winning, but maybe because of those... ...land forts across the DMZ, they were struggling. Alright, the capital's capitulated. Dude, they got a lot of military forces, so densely packed. Holy cow, 95k. We've lost now 500. Nice. We've divided and conquered them. Oh, <laughs> we somehow managed... Oh, no, actually... They sunk um, a supply convoy. That's interesting. Yeah, well, we don't need to take any of this. We just give the rest of the state to them, I suppose. Hang on. Because there's no point in forming another country. We just unite. Wait, where are they? There. Yeah, let's give it all to them. Nice. We have a united peninsula now as well. Hell yeah. This is really cool. They are non-aligned, which is interesting. However, they have... Reunification now. As we're still slowly but surely paying off our debt, which we've nearly done. We've dropped it significantly. Right, this isn't war still going on for some reason. I suppose we justify against them. Just to bring some consistency over here. Skipped a little bit ahead. 7th of October 2009. We've nearly completely wiped out the debt that we've incurred from the GFC. George W. Bush is still expanding the American economy. Now that he has Senate and House support. The economy is booming. And we're making money left, right and centre. First of January 2010. Look at this, fellas. We're making 135 billion, and the debt will be nearly completely wiped out. It's taken us 10 years, and we've cleared America from economical <laughs> and financial ruin and hardship. And now. GWB is now in charge. We can go down some. More ideals. 
Uh, whoops, where was this? There was a small little conflict here. Alright. Looks like it was mostly pro Western Outlook. Um, now that we've paid off the debt, we can swing things back to some higher quality healthcare, you would imagine. Still costs like a hundred billion. Uh, the UK has withdrawn from the European Union. Same with Sweden in this series, for whatever reason. Um, let's get the highest form of education here as well. Uh, we probably can increase the military spending as well. To sizable. We'll build up a bit of a war chest. Popped up again. But we're going to get to a point where we can probably pay for most of these. Look, we might go into another, a little bit of debt when another wall pops up, but we're good. Oh, so they've officially left now. The Irish referendum. Looks like Northern Ireland's going to stay. Say, God save the Queen. Yeah, I wonder if Scotland will follow suit or stay like Northern Ireland just did. Nice. Now I gotta watch out for this. The non aligned has grown quite a bit, probably because of our coalition, which is now 60% popularity. The Republic Party's gone up a bit. We also can probably ban some of these parties, so let's do that. We don't want too many of them gaining influence. We have lost a, a pretty big chunk of the pie here, particularly in Western Outlook, so if we can change that, that would be better. But yeah, let's just try and get rid of some of these other parties. And really just boost the rest. That are pro-Western. But yeah, now we've nearly got a war chest of 500 billion. We're still allowing countries like Brazil and the UK to invest. But everything's looking good. Now they're in June 2010. As we can't be aggressive against the Ruskies, we'll try and wait for them or any other faction to attack us, really, as we continue to build up the economy. But we haven't got too many world adversaries left, really. Hungary's triggered Article 50. Really? Hungary wants to leave as well. Oh, wow. Alright, they've got non aligned. Also, we can get the, um, the MK17 now, so let's do that. We also can get better quality. Scotland has left the UK and has declared its own independence. <laughs> They're out of NATO now. Um, and I suppose we just guarantee their independence. Well, we kind of al aligned with the UK, so they might want to take it back. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, if you like this development, make sure to leave the video a like and uh, subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Alright, it is the 2nd of December 2010. And we'll see how we go. We might have some wars here today. But anyway, first up, got to say a massive thank you to this month's YouTube channel members. Massive thank you to Divine Overhand, Mikey, Eric, Chuckles the Hut, Itchy, Green Nero One, Dimitri H, and Hector Bay. Really appreciate those guys. Uh, we're currently out of our debt crisis, and we've got a war chest of 700 billion in the bank. Okay. So, I'm just trying to see how we can essentially have a war with CSTO and finish off our last and final enemy. We've taken out a bunch of territory in the last couple of episodes. But I think because we're a defensive alliance, it's pretty hard for the Western Outlook nations to have aggressive wars. So I thought maybe going to war with Vietnam might be the play. 
to draw CSTO in, but we might be better off to go to war with Jordan because they... What do they do exactly? Because we can war deck them. Oh, that's it. They defaulted on their debt. Now I remember. Because we don't even have to justify against them. So, I think what we'll do is we'll move everyone out. We'll move some of our units to Jordan and we'll move them north as well. We're in no rush. But it looks like things against us and the Ruskies are probably going to get underway. So let's set things up. Because we border them in our territory here. If it turns into an offensive, we might be able to push through our puppet territory here. In the west. So let's draw out some battle lines. Because they're probably going to call in Kazakhstan as well. And... Yeah, it's a shame we can't just move them to our territory here in the east. In the middle. We're just going to have to go navally, which is fine. We've got plenty of transports to do so. Just take a little while. It's interesting that they're in CSTO. So there's like even a little enclave here. So we might actually need to send an army over there. Because the last thing we want is... For our newly acquired territory in uh, East Asia to get reconquered back. Population wise, we've currently got 4.2 million, which is huge. War support is 100, our stability is fine as well. Navies wise, it's currently in China, so let's move them out of the seas. And redock them so um let's turn that off same with you so we'll move you north to protect the sea of japan because you never know there might be a little bit of conflict here and we just need to control them probably in the black sea and baltic but I'm sure my NATO allies can deal with them in the Baltic. We don't need the US Navy operating in and around the Nordic countries. However, I will station our next Navy here in Istanbul to control the, the Bosporus. Also, I might move my air wings, which were... housed in Japan and in the east as well and we'll move everyone across slowly and and make plans and preparations for another invasion we're probably not going to have this war against Vietnam oh they're going to call in Egypt which is interesting <laughs> I guess we um if we take it give it back control to the British I don't know let them control the Suez Canal once again, <laughs> potentially, or maybe we should just flip them to Western Democratic, like we did with their neighbours. Propping their neighbours up in that proxy war. Alright, let's uh, reallocate my air force. And the rest will send back over here. So it's the 14th of January, 2011. If things go to plan, we might very well have the war to end all wars this year. Let's move in some Grey Eagle drones. Some fighter jets, harriers, raptors, falcons, etc. And also support as well. We're also currently under the new reign of our president, George W. Bush, after Al Gore, Al Gore was um, 
Vote it out. Serve two terms back to back. Eight years in total. I wonder if Georgie boy can now do the same. Alright. Waiting them to disembark. And yeah, so there's even a small little potential front line here to the north. Near Yerevan. So we're going to have to occupy over there as well. Now, we should have the inferior air force. I can't imagine any country nor Alliance really contesting us. Yeah, I can't imagine CSTO has better quality fighters. They might have numerical old sort of Soviet craft, but they won't have the um, really high quality planes. Anyway, we've got some divisions. Let's send them to Scandinavia. They've arrived here. Because there could be a potential front. We've expanded NATO to encompass a crazy amount of factions. One being Finland. So we'll try and make a front line here just in case a front line opens up. We'll try and call everyone in. We're running out of admirals, so let's go with you. And this time, let's help the Finns in their winter war, potentially. Um, look, you know what? We might go and fully help out the Baltic states, housing troops, and trying to um, hold them instead of allowing them to be cannon fodder. They recently changed up the uh, tripwire system, which is interesting. That they enacted here. It's interesting. If uh, we kick things off in certain areas, we are going to struggle. Make sure everyone's going really quite aggressively. We want to try and blitzkrieg it. Rapidly advancing is probably our play. As we declare war upon... Jordan, Egypt's now being called in, along with most of CSTO now. Our puppets are probably going to come in firstly. Will NATO itself? I don't know. It's sure going to be interesting. But yeah, guaranteeing and... Going to war with nations that are, well, guaranteeing others is the play. Dude, thankfully Jordan defaulted on their debt. Holy shit. Alright, we can't seem to push here over in Kazakhstan, but we seem to be in the east. Oh, looks like we're going to make quick work of the Jordanian army here. They're also bringing in some other reinforcements. Once we take these two pieces of territory, we're going to be able to push into Egypt to capitulate the entirety of CSTO. We just need to bring down the Ruskies. Yeah, so so no front line is being opened up over here because they haven't been called in. Greece and Australia want to send military forces. They've capitulated. Fantastic. Yeah, so it looks like they're not going to go over the border. Hmm. We did actually have a Cassus Belly against them at one point, but I, I, I guess it just disappeared. I think it's got to do with world tension and certain acts as well. Oh. Looks like we've lost air supremacy here, so it's probably stopped us from taking some tiles. Alright, looks like our puppets are coming in, which is fantastic. Alright, back over here. They've capitulated. Perfect. As we push towards 
Georgia. We might be able to go over the Caucasus as well. Multiple factions we're at war with, but we seem to be mostly on our own. We can't even seem to be moving in some of these areas. Well, things have really hottened up now. Nice. Well, let's continue over the Caucasus Mountain Ranges. And try and push and make our way to the capital, I suppose. Yeah, damn, if we could move from the Baltic states and, um... Finland, that'd be massive. Greece and Australia's divisions have now arrived. Fantastic. Or oh, some other states here. I don't even know where they are. Oh, they're in the north here. Okay. Looks like the Greeks are dealing with them. Okay. Uh, back down in Jordan. Dude, we lost 16k to their 40. Oh, dude, we're really racking it up now. We've lost more than this than in the um, East Asian campaign. Yeah, the main thing is the rest of NATO ain't in. Alright. Supply is really quite tough here. They seem to not have much military assets to the south to shit. Maybe it's being tied up elsewhere. Alright. They're not going to be able to last much longer now. Nice. Well. I suppose we just gobble up this territory for ourselves. Nice. Alright, some little pockets of resistance. Let's redraw all this and make our way to Egypt. I think we'll try and send some more units north. Because... Once our northern enemy capitulates... That's the end of the war. We only have to get rid of them. We don't even really need to go after these guys. It's really just protecting our southern border, more or less. We just need to quickly get back north as well, to be fair. Yeah, it looks like most of them are over here. Yeah, we can't call them in. Nice, they're capitulated. Alright, quickly deal with this pocket of resistance, these states that have popped up. Was it 17k? Now it's dropped down to 11. Maybe that was just the Jordanian bit. Okay. We're pushing over the Suez now. And we're going to be on the footsteps of Cairo soon. Yeah, interesting that they back them, even though they're Western Outlook, which is interesting. I suppose they guaranteed their independence. Egypt. Oh, now they're moving forces down here. But you never know, we might be able to cut them off. Nice. Uh, let's just take them, because they rebelled from me, essentially. Oh, just got to be a little bit careful here. From this Caucasus push. Because we've taken... Some pretty decent pieces of territory. 
And we've taken some strong air bases, so let's uh, reallocate some of the fleet here as well. Because I can't stress this enough, air supremacy is vital in Millennium Dawn. It can make or break campaigns. You know what? We might be better off nearly to send an ICBM. Because we do have silos in Qatar. It might give us a better chance if we have air supremacy. It's not like vanilla where you need like a plane to full-on drop it. You could actually launch it from a silo. So maybe we should do that. Because we've been saving our warheads mostly. Yeah, look, you know what? Let's get a nuclear missile going. So, let's get a Minuteman 3. Let's equip it with a warhead. And we built those silos at the start of the game in Kuwait. So, let's launch it from there. And we want it to hit their capital. Now, it's not instant like in vanilla. It does take a while. And I don't know why it's the Facebook logo, <laughs> but we'll fire it now. Just for the hell of it. We haven't launched one the entire campaign. Mostly because I've wanted the civilian factories. And it's not like we've been really grinding against infantry that much. Like, we need to crush their supply. Like, why not? If we're dealing with our last major faction here today. Let's drop one. You can also set it that you can shoot multiple as well. Launch multiple, rather. Yeah, thankfully I built that airbase and those silos a long time ago. Is it going, or do we need to launch another one? Why is it not going? It should be. It might be just time, though. Like I said, it does take a while. Let's set up a couple more, I think. And do the same. Look, let's get uh, multiple going. Let's get another one. Like here. Send one right at him. <laughs> nice, there we go. Alright, they're probably going to hit us though. We're going to hit it back. We're on uh, retaliatory strike as well. But things have really hottened up. WW3 is well underway. Oh, we've got to be a little bit careful here. In Egypt, we might get cut off. Oh, it looks like we have as well. Shit. I've been so focused on the northern border. That we've got to worry about Egypt. Yeah, it's a shame NATO didn't come in. Well, thankfully, I've got this territory here. Because we would have to rely on puppets if we didn't full-on occupy it ourselves. <laughs> oh, we found him, lol. Unbelievable. <laughs> We've conquered nearly half of the map and we couldn't find him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was hiding out there. <laughs> well, I'm s assuming they're going to... ...decline. I guess we launch an embargo against them. Well, that might give us a cast of to go against them as well. Alright. 
Our forces are about to take the capital and waltz on in. And we've taken it. So, I think we'll focus on taking as much territory as we can west of the Urals. And then we'll focus on the west. Oh. Air yeah, supremacy is the problem. How are we going over here? Looks like the Australians are helping us out. It's even worse up here in what would be, I imagine, Siberia. The terrain. The logistics are so harsh. Dude, Egypt is putting up a pretty good fight here. Like, you know what? We're kind of wasting some of these divisions. We need to reallocate them. Like, maybe... Moving you north. Oh, it just depends when they're going to move on over. Like, we can't even move through here. It's just a bit of a stalemate in the east here. Because we're, we're doing okay, but they seem to be maintaining a bit. Like, if they even push over the border from Finland, like, they're going to be fine. Yeah, we definitely can't call them in directly. No. We can't, which is a shame for whatever reason. Right, well, let's delete that front line. Move to the port of Helsinki, and we'll try and get them around. Oh, they've got the little enclave here just north of Poland, don't they? The old <laughs> Prussian territory. Oh, they're actually pushing us here a little bit. We have surrounded them here in this airbase. If we could take that, it'd be crucial. Oh, dude, it's ballooned to 100k. So, they're currently trading with us. Yeah, I haven't really decided what I want to do with the country entirely. A little bit back and forth here as well in Egypt. Alright, we need to set up our air force properly because that's what's slowing us down here. We need aerial supremacy. Like, we worked up the air force with us really quite well. It's just now that they're, we're really... In the depths, and the doldrums, in the deep of their country. We need to do it. <laughs> like, you just gotta be careful not to put too many planes in. It's a shame none of these can really house thousands of them. I guess it kind of deliberately hamstrings you and handicaps you from doing so and just chucking the entire fleet in. Because you do need to keep an eye on how many can operate per airfield. You seriously don't want to go over. Got a bunch of ace pilots, though. Yeah, they're still holding down here. Same here in uh, Egypt. It's just turned into a little bit of a stalemate. Alright, let's, uh... I guess go here. Try and bring those reinforcements from the, from the Baltic down there. We are tying down a lot of forces in the east, which is probably not a bad idea. Because most of the cities are in the west and have most of the victory points. Also, once we rally up with these NATO countries and NATO territory, they actually can move their armies into our own territory that we've occupied, which is pretty good. Our allies are just cheering us on from the sidelines. Oh shit, they capitulated there. Oh, they're really pushing. Oh, we just need our reinforcements to arrive. 
Seems to be a bit of an opening here. Nice. And now we've got reinforcements coming in. More or less acting as um, peacekeeping missions. Well, let's uh, swing them around. Nice, they've capitulated. Because even in Egypt, we've been lacking aer aerial supremacy and support. Jeez, we're losing a lot of casualties. <laughs> Our fuel is basically empty as well. Looks like the Brits, the Koreans, and the Japanese are defending our territory in the east. It's still in our favour. It's only a matter of time before they capitulate. It just me it's just gonna be a matter of time and how many of us they're really gonna take out. Nice. Dude. It's ballooned to two hundred K. I reckon once we end this series, if we can keep it under five hundred K loss, that's pretty good. For the amount of territory we gained. Oh my god, we are super st struggling in Egypt. I think it's just due to the multiple rivers. Jeez, that's probably where most of the losses are. Because we're focusing so hard in the north. You know what, instead of keeping these guys in and around the Caucasus. You know what, we're probably better off just sending them south. We're having a harder time down here than we are in the north. Oh, we're currently hemorrhaging in debt. Like, we've ballooned back up to 400 billion in debt after we wiped it. They're so, so close to capitulating. Shit. Nice, we're about to cut them off in the north here. It's really quite crucial because they got a lot of silos and military infrastructure up in the uh, peninsula up there in the north. Not entirely sure what that area is called. Seventy percent, seventy percent towards capitulation now. Hell yeah! They are so so close. Come on, guys, push for it. We've taken most of the important infrastructure now. Just a couple more victory points, a couple more cities, and then we got them. Alright, we've bounced around back. Come on. It might be worth just sending a unit to their new established capital here. And then they're done. Basically drawing casualties. Hey, that's it. She's all over Red Rover. Done and dusted. The WW3 Hot War has been complete. We got a lot of countries' futures we are need to decide well I guess we gobble up all this especially the territory in and around which is close to Alaska I want all this juicy territory to start things off connect that up with uh, our easternmost territory um Damn, I, I wish the other members were in, our other allies, because I would have given Finland some. Because they, um, ceded territory a long time ago to them. Um, 
I think we'll puppet them. Bring them back to the pro Western sphere of influence. Um, they kind of betrayed us, so maybe we give, we puppet them because they were going to join NATO originally, and then we give them all of this southern territory, make them the dominant power here in the uh, Caucasus. That'll do just fine. Um. I guess I could give that territory to my subject, maybe. Or we could just take it for ourselves, because there's a lot of untapped oil resources there, matter of fact. Especially around that inland, so... Yeah, I would give it to them, but I can't. That's a shame. So I guess I suppose I take it for myself. Because we'll take this Caucasus territory. I do want to puppet... At least one chunk of it. But I think we'll give them... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think you take everything east from the capital, like this. And the uh, Caucasus Territory as well. I'll bring that under my direct control. And we'll puppet this. Change the government type. And then we'll give all this territory to them, the puppet. We might, we might, we won't make this a separate country. We'll just make it one now. And this can all be a new country. Uh, sure, I guess we puppet it weirdly. Nice. We took 47 states in total. Look at this. <laughs> no other factions in the world. Yeah, as if Italy left. Oh yeah, Scotland did as well. And Canada. Wow. Well, that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. 10th of September, 2010. After the last war here ballooned back to 700 million but we're going to be able to pay it off eventually we need to bring in some law in some of these areas we're good oh we still got to deal with this other war with egypt eh oh well, that won't that won't take too long but uh nice they're now our puppet And we've painted the world a beautiful blue NATO slash United States. Right, let's quickly finish off this war and we'll probably puppet them the same. I could give it to the British. Maybe they deserve it after losing Scotland. But uh, it might be the same. We They might not come in, essentially. Well... Let's quickly move our military forces down here. Look, if we can get all of our apparatus to purely focus on them, they're not going to be out for much longer, but got to give it to them. I really admire any country that's brave and shows resilience. Uh, NASA cooperation, sure. And I suppose we grant the bailout as well. Well, we don't need to probably because they're pro-Western, so maybe not. Alright, Poland wants to help out. We had 18 units in this division. It's gone down to four. Crikey. Yeah, maybe that's where the um, casualties ballooned. More than anything. Alright. Our units and battalions are hammering down south from the north. And they're going to be here within a matter of days. And our puppets are going to be able to help as well. We're going to be able to get some of their divisions to help us out, which is hilarious. They're going to be fighting alongside us. 
Nice. Things are back in our favor slightly here. Yeah, look at this. As more units come here down daily. More tanks, more lines. Uh, we need to get back... Air Supremacy. So, let's move these flyboys south. That were operating super far north. And we'll get them, them to help out down here. We should change the tide dramatically. There we go. And now we're going to be rapidly taking tiles. Nice. We are sure are. We sure as shit are. Look at that ticking up. Right, I've retaken the port. For, I don't know. I've lost count. A second. A third. A fourth time. We're still only 300 days away from those. MKs. Yeah, look at that. It's like 96% in our favor. We're doing much better. Perfect. Oh, dude. They're done. Look at this. Hammering through it once we've got a combined force properly. Purely focusing on it with one clear goal. Yeah, they're gone. They capitulated just then. <laughs> yeah. I could take it. Straight up if we want to. Hmm. Add more. Why not? Fuck it. Add some more coastal territory. Holy shit. Nice. Well, we'll last to see us TOs here, but that doesn't bother me. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to wrap things up here today. And we might put a pin in the series as well. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more. But I think we're sort of done and dusted. We've completed our main series objections of being pro-Western, pro-American uh, Empire and imperialism. Basically, there's no adversaries left. Um, we've gotten rid of our major enemies and we've essentially won WW3. And we've, spent, we've spread Western democracy throughout the world. And we basically completed the tech tree as well. There's not much we can do. So maybe we should move on to something else. Definitely down to play more Millennium Dawn Modern Day Mod. Let me know other country suggestions in the comments. Here's the uh, tech tree as well. Yeah. Like and sub if you haven't already. Really much appreciate it. Do want to do more Hearts of Iron on the channel. Check out my social media links linked in the description below as well. And look, you, why not for the hell of it? Let's uh, give Texas and California their independence. <laughs> Make them act as a puppet. And... We'll do the same there for Cali. We could allow... Is it Cascadia? That North Western Territory. So, Texas is now independent, along with California, which is hilarious. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this series. And I've got to say a massive thank you to this month's YouTube channel members. Massive thank you to Divine Overhand, Mikey, Eric, Chuckles the Hut, Itchy, Green Nero One, Dimitri H, and Hector A. I really appreciate those guys. Hell of a series. A lot of fun. My first series on this brand new version of the modern day mod. Had an absolute blast. I've learnt a lot. And I'm definitely keen to do more. So, without further ado, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic resty day. My name has been Simsy, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.